Angle of inclination. Now, what we're going to work out in a second is this question. So I'm just going to state it to you real simple. But before we answer directly, I've got to sort of take a bit of a detour. Okay? Here's the question. Have a look up on the um, board so you can see it. What I'm interested in is measuring this angle right here. What is the angle that this curve makes with the horizontal axis there, the x-axis? Okay? What's that angle? Can I measure it? Answer, yes. How do we use all this information that we've got right now? One of the things we often do in maths is we think about complicated problems, messy problems, like gross. I don't measure angles with curved things. That's just weird, right? It is disgusting. We think about simpler versions of problems, see if we can solve that and see if some principle there will help us with a more complicated problem. Like for instance, imagine if what we could do was take this weird curvy object and take, instead of that, substitute it for a straight object that behaved just like this curvy object does. If only I could work out, for example, what this curve was like as a straight line and then I can just measure that angle like I've measured every other angle in my life, right? That's what calculus is all about. So let's have a think about how we're going to do this, okay? First, underneath this, consider. Draw me up a, uh, you can do this one fairly small, a Cartesian plane. And then on here, instead of this weird, gross looking, curvy thing, let's draw just a, uh, a straight line, like so. Okay. Now, if what we wanted was the angle of inclination, which is just like an angle of elevation on this guy, it would be much more straightforward because we can use all of our knowledge of trigonometry to help us, right? If we want to find an angle, all we need is a couple of lengths in a right angle triangle and off we go, okay? Now, I admit there's no right angle triangle there at the moment, but it's not difficult to make one. Watch. If I, for example, take anywhere, literally anywhere, and draw a vertical line, like so, and then complement it with a horizontal line out from the foot of that. Ta-da! Right angle triangle. And you can see I've got a rise over run situation happening. So I want you to tell me, in this right angle triangle here, which piece of trigonometry helps us connect this angle to these two sides? Have a look. This has to be tan, right? Because it's opposite on adjacent. See that? Right? Opposite over adjacent. So what I can say here is, hold on a second, tan theta is opposite over adjacent. Rise over run. You okay with that? But I have a definition for rise over run. We normally call it gradient, right? So the letter we usually use for gradient is m. So m equals tan theta. Right? Or if you wanted, you could say theta, that's the angle I'm after, is in most cases tan inverse of whatever your gradient is. So for instance, get your calculator there. Um, let's go in degrees mode for now. Um, and if, for example, I had a line with a gradient of 1. This is not it, but just suppose it had a gradient of 1. Go ahead and put in theta equals tan inverse of 1. What do you get? What does your calculator tell you in degrees? If I had a gradient of 1, right, and I said, oh, theta equals, you should get 10 inverse of 1 is 45 degrees, which makes sense, isn't it? You've got a gradient of 1. Every time you go across 1, you go up 1. It's a 45 degree angle. Makes sense? This line doesn't look like 1. Suppose it was 2 over 1. Can you do 10 inverse of 2 for me? What's 10 inverse of 2? 63. 63. Does that look, eyeball that, that looks fine, doesn't it? And as you can see, if you went 10 inverse of 3, 10 inverse of 4, as you get steeper, try and put in something crazy. Like 10 inverse of like 1,000, what happens? What do you get? I want an actual answer. 89 degrees. 89.56 or whatever, degrees and minutes, well, however you want to do it, right? So in other words, I'm getting close to something, aren't I? There's a, a limit on this, right? You can put tan inverse of a million. I can tell you, you're never going to get to 90 degrees. degrees. Why not? Why not? There's already a 90 degrees. If you have one of them, yeah. degrees. It would have to be straight up, wouldn't it? And you can't measure tan on that. It's not a triangle. Okay? So how can I use that? Uh, because your calculator just... Fine. Okay. Your calculator was like, I've run out of nines to put here. Just, just have it. Just have 90 degrees. Okay. All right. Now, how can I use this? 
to help me? Well, remember, the whole idea of a tangent is, if you look close enough, the tangent and the straight, sorry, and the curve are exactly the same thing. So here's what I need. I need the equation, or the gradient really, just, of the tangent at this point. Right? How am I going to look at the picture? I'm not going to tell you words. How am I going to work out the gradient of that tangent? What am I going to do? What I'm trying to get to is the gradient of this tangent. Oh, can you right? just make it as a triangle and solve it? So I can just draw a triangle in there and start measuring things out. My problem though is, unlike with this guy where we just made up some numbers, I actually can't measure these accurately. I need to use this calculus stuff. What can I do? Sorry, find the gradient How am I going to find the gradient on this? That's my question. What do you think is now? Haven't we spent most of this morning? developing a way to find gradients of weird curvy things, we're going to use the difference question, the derivative, right? So I'm going to help you out a little bit. You can do this by first principles. I'm just going to save you a little bit of time right now and I'm going to tell you if that was f of x, I'm going to tell you right now that f dash will be 2x minus 1. Now some of you will be very suspicious and say, how did you just work that out, right? Um, partly experience, but also there's a rule in my head that you're going to learn soon, but we're not quite ready for it, okay? But that's what you are going to get. Once you get there, how are you going to use this? What do you do with 2x minus 1? We add points you to draw one. We add one. What, are, what are we after? We're after an angle, right? Yeah. To get an angle, what do I need? I need, a, I need a gradient, right? So how do I use this to find the specific gradient that I'm after there? So no. I've kind of got my graph already. What can I do off this? You could draw this if you like, but I would suggest we don't necessarily need to, right? Where do I want the gradient? Yeah, Jimmy. Do you find the stationary point? Oh, where's the stationary point on this graph, by the way? Where is it? You could point to it, right? The stationary point? Say it again, Perrin. It's between zero and one. It's between the zero and the one. It's right here, isn't it? Okay, which is not the point I'm interested in, yeah? All I want is the gradient of this line at that point oh, right there, oh, at x equals 1. It happens to be the x oh. intercept, right? So now let's work it out. F dash what? 1 equals what? Um, 1. 2. 1. 2 lots of 1, take away 1, don't forget your substitution step. It does equal 1, okay? So then what am I going to do with that? I can say theta equals tan inverse of 1, which you already worked out, it's 45 degrees. Now go ahead and pop into Desmos, this x squared minus x, and have a look at the angle, and you will find, sure enough, it's 45 degrees. Okay.